Good morning. It's been about three weeks since the Bitcoin Cash hard fork that has now split the network into two chains, BCH and a chain tentatively called BCHA. That occurred on November 15th, 2020. And back in June, I was basically the first person to say that this fork was incoming. So I wanted to, now that the dust has settled, give my thoughts on what has occurred, why it occurred, and what we can expect moving forward. In June, when I said that a fork was incoming, I said that it was because of the social pressures that were happening within the community of individuals who both write and release the code for full nodes, and then as a knock-on effect, the miners who run that code, who are of course affected by the decisions that are made by the developers who write the code. And I had said that there, one, would be a fork incoming, two, that it would be best to just get it done now, uh, because the sooner it was done, even though it was going to cause pain in, in doing what was going to happen, the sooner it was done, the less pain there would be. And then three, I said, because it's inevitable, we may as well do this amicably. And two out of three ain't bad, because there definitely was a fork incoming. It did happen in November, thanks to some leadership and, and actually pulling the trigger on making it happen. And then... It wasn't amicable at all. It was a, a very contentious split that wound up with two independent networks with the sides exactly as they were and really a lot of wasted vitriol, if you look at it, uh, compared to just basically what, what ended up occurring. As I look now, we've been through essentially three hard forks of what I would call the legitimate Bitcoin community. So we're not talking about somebody who forks the coin just to try to get some of coins of their own and make like a little quick buck, something like Bitcoin gold, and there's no real community behind it or anything. There were three events, you could say, where there were serious differences among people, many of whom had been long time Bitcoiners involved for for many many years. I myself, you know, got in in 2012. But there are individuals who have been Bitcoiners for longer than that in every one of the now four camps. Four is a number of stability. That's the it's in numerology. It's considered one of the the most stable numbers. You could see the reason why. You know, a table with four legs is pretty stable chair with four legs is pretty stable. The pyramid, the Great Pyramid of Giza has a, a four-sided bottom and then uses, of course, the triangles as the sides, four triangles. Very stable. And I think that we have reached a point where there's a high, going to be a high degree of stability now. And I don't think that we're going to see really another fork from any of these communities now. And I'll, I will tell you why. Essentially, as I look now and see, it took a while to see what is the pattern that is causing these forks to happen. And fundamentally, it's about a question. We can now see that. And the question is, what or who, who should decide what are the correct changes to make to the rules of the network to make it sustainable. Everybody who's involved in these four chains, and by the four chains I mean BTC, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, BCH, Bitcoin SV, BSV, and now Bitcoin ABC. Hopefully it'll get the, the uh, ticker ABC. They should have done that a long time ago. Hopefully they don't stick with this BCHA. That's very, very strange. Um, it's, there's a, a question of who decides what the rules should be or if they should be changed and we didn't really know that that's what the question that was being asked was or that's what the conflict was about we didn't know it i don't think up until now because it took that to see the pattern but it's kind of like 
you know, if you're arguing with your significant other, boyfriend, girlfriend, wife, husband, brother, sister, parents, you know, and you're arguing about some, generally an argument will start over some arbitrary petty thing. Ah, you should, why did you not do the dishes and you didn't put down the toilet seat or whatever? And those things can escalate. And you will notice if you're honest with yourself that you're not actually arguing about that. There's something else that you, that's actually underneath it all. And that you will continue arguing and there will continue to be vitriol until you address the underlying issue. And so, First, there was block size in the BTC debate. Second, with BSV, there were two things, but the main one seemed to be um, a, an opcode called opcheck data sig, which has allowed all kinds of interesting things to be done in the script language of Bitcoin uh, that's now on Bitcoin Cash and Bitcoin ABC, all of the most interesting projects. Uh, my own projects, everything I've been working on basically since the split, things like the, the contactless NFC cards that uh, Tobias Rook is working on, things like AnyPay that, uh, that, that are doing the, the sort of futures with an Oracle on Bitcoin Cash. All of these exciting projects that people are working on are all reliant on this addition that was made that was basically the cause of the split in BSV and BCH. And now there is a, uh, an issue of a funding mechanism. And is it legitimate that a development team would add in, the lead development team would add in this funding mechanism? And it's not truly a consensus rule, but it's functionally a consensus rule. And change the consensus rules in that way. Is that a legitimate thing to do? What we've settled on with these four chains is really a question of who decides those things. In the case of BTC, they just basically have said, no one gets to decide. There are no leaders. This is their narrative. We don't change it. Hard forks are bad. We don't change these consensus rules. If we can't find a way to do it in this soft fork way, this non-hard fork way, we just simply don't do it. And that is one solution to the problem. Who gets to decide? No one gets to decide. We just don't change it. And we moved along, and then there was another split. And the question was, a change is going to be made. It was, there was a lot of people who wanted to make this change. But then there was a certain group that said, no, who gets to make the, the decision? One man, Craig Wright, who these people believe is Satoshi. Only Satoshi should get to make the decision of, of what changes should and should not happen. Because BSV made changes. They made changes. They said, oh, we're going to do a lockdown protocol, but... They've made changes, <laughs> significant changes, in the course of locking it down. So the decision was, Craig Wright will decide, and then we will no longer make changes because no one else can make them. So BTC, no one makes changes. BSV, one man can make a change. In the BCH ABC recent fork, one of the things that I kept addressing, I was using this term Bitshevik to describe the people who were anti ABC and the change that they wanted to make that introduced the funding mechanism. And I was using the term Bitshevik as a, a sort of a play on the term Bolshevik, which were the which was turned into the Soviet party in Russia. And Bolshevik means majority. And they drew their more it literally means majority. They drew their moral legitimacy from the fact that they were in the majority in terms of the way that they wanted to run socialism. And we basically saw that as well. And so what we see there is BCH now has this idea of who should decide what consensus rules there are. The majority should decide. So BTC, no one can decide. BSV, one man can decide. BCH, the majority decides. And then BCHA the narrative, and I hope this continues to be the narrative, and I hope that, that this is embraced because I think that it creates a nice balance, a nice four-part balance, and people who feel one of those, because people have different opinions on sovereignty, on who should make decisions about important things. BCHA, it seems to be 
anyone can make a decision and anyone can decide to follow or not. You make a decision and if people follow, they follow. And if they don't, they don't, it fails. But you don't have to ask permission. You just go ahead and do it. And we can, and then we just simply debate over, I like this, I don't. If you like it, follow. If you don't, don't. But I think that the mechanism that's in place with ABC so far, and I hope that it's evolved, is a good one for maintaining that in that they have a, a hard fork every six months, so they basically put themselves up to a vote. I believe that has to stay. They've got this structure of this global network council where 50% of the funding is then decided upon in a mechanism by major holders and major miners. I believe that has to stay. Hopefully it evolves over time and it has mechanisms built in for it to be able to evolve. Because I think that that's the only way that you can maintain the sort of idea that anyone can make a decision on these changes and if you follow you follow and if you don't you don't every six months there's an opportunity but you'd better present a much better alternative it's not just going to be uh no one can make a change it's not just going to be only craig wright can tell you what changes should be made it's not just going to be all of the majority people who are here are going to get minors to signal and there's going to be all this different ideas of voting and a parliament and we're going to make joint statements and the majority think this and then thus that's how it should be. This is a, a model that I think is going to resonate with voluntarists. But it's great to have all four because now we have all four experiments to see which, one, which way is Bitcoin going to go. And underneath them all, they are all Bitcoin. They are all following Satoshi's fundamental vision of peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash. Now, that we can argue about that. We can argue about denominations and everything. But some people are going to resonate towards nobody gets to change it. It's unchanging and eternal. Some people are going to resonate towards let's follow this one. Let's pick a leader and let's follow that one leader. That's a viable, that's a viable approach to sovereignty. Some people are going to gravitate towards, let's all make a vote. Let's all get together. Let's have a vote and majority rules. That's viable too. That's worked in many societies, at least for long periods of time. And then one of them will have, anybody can make a decision. It's a free market. You choose. View it like a product, right? I'm going to make a product. You're going to make a product. We'll compete in the free market of both ideas and then actual hash power. And so I think that we are in a very good place. I'm very hopeful now for Bitcoin. We need this going into these dark times that we're going into. We're going to need uh, all four of these chains to be strong in their own way. And I hope that people gravitate towards the one that really resonates towards them because they have, now they've got the options. So I, I'm really looking forward. I'm glad that this happened. Of course, it could have been a little more amicable, but these are important issues. People have their passions, and I'm glad that everybody was able to, uh, to, to now have their way. So I'm looking forward to the future of Bitcoin, and I hope that you are too.